everyone and welcome to Busy Little Minds. Today's episode is a special one because it's about the Indian independence movement. So without any further ado, let's begin. The East India Company was trading in India since the 1600s, but it started to claim huge portions of land in 1757. The 50,000 Nawab soldiers fought against the 3,000 British, but astoundingly, the British won. The gunpowder of the Nawabs was spoiled by rain. The British thought ahead and covered their gunpowder. Britain then stole what is now $5 million from Bengal and used it to capture more land. This text blurb here is describing Section 2, the Sepoy Mutiny. What? The Sepoy Mutiny. Where? Miru, 40 miles northeast of Old Delhi. Who? Sepoys, professional Indian infantrymen. Why? They were unsatisfied with British rule due to the imposing of social reforms, the fact that they didn't let Indians hold high office in their own land because they thought that Indians were corrupt, cruel taxes, favoritism of the rich, and doubt of the improvements brought by British rule. And one major trigger of the Sepoy mutiny was the Enfield rifle. The Enfield pattern 1853 rifle muskets fired mini balls, bullets, and used pre-greased paper cartridges. To load the Enfield, Sepoys had to bite the cartridge open. The grease used on the cartridges was made of tallow that included beef and lard that included pork, which is offensive to Hindus and Muslims. How? The rebellion began in Meerut and rapidly spread to Delhi. The ruler of Delhi, who was a Mughal ruler by the name of Bahadur Shah Zafar, was declared the emperor of Hindustan. The sepoys captured large areas in the northwestern region of India, such as Delhi, Kanpur, Lucknow, Jhansi, and Bihar. When? The 10th of May, 1857. Mangal Pandey was a 29-year-old sepoy who was annoyed with the actions of the East India Company. He rebelled against the commanders. When Sergeant Major James Hewson and Lieutenant Henry Ball came to see what the commotion was, they were met with gunfire from Pandey. Finally, General John Hearsay ordered Commander Ishwari Prasad to arrest Mongol Pandey, but Prasad refused. In the end, Sheikh Paltu restrained Mongol Pandey. Mongol Pandey attempted to take his own life after his attempt to start a rebellion failed, but only injured himself, and was tried in court and hanged on the 6th of April, 1857. Ishwari Prasad was sentenced to death and hanged on the 22nd of April, 1857. Sheikh Paltu was promoted, but was murdered. Many sepoys thought this was a harsh punishment to Pandey and Prasad, which led to general anger and disgruntlement. Eventually, the 34th BNI was broken up. This is a sepoy. Thousands of sepoys rebelled against the East India Company in 1857. The sepoy rebellion started in Meerut. It was widely known that the Enfield rifle would cause unrest, but Lieutenant Colonel George Carmichael Smith, who was commanding officer of the 3rd Bengal Light Cavalry, still ordered 90 men to perform drills with the Enfield. 85 of the men refused and on the 9th of May, 1857, were sentenced to 10 years imprisonment with hard labor. Some young ones were given five years. The entire 3rd Bengal Light Cavalry stood by as they were handcuffed. However, the sepoys weren't just gonna stand around and let their comrades be arrested. Some sepoys warned junior European officers that there were plans to free the imprisoned soldiers, but they weren't taken seriously. On the 10th of May, 1857, Indian troops led by, led by the 3rd Cavalry rebelled. They attacked European officers' quarters and freed the imprisoned officers. The sepoys then headed for Delhi. On the 11th of May, 1857, the troops reached Delhi and the rebellion grew larger. 
Some units immediately joined the rebellion, but others held back, refused to act against the rebellion. Bahadur Shah ignored the rebels at first, but eventually held court and agreed to lead the rebels. The majority of the sepoys were Hindus, but a large amount were also Muslims. The Sikhs sided with the British. They resented the sepoys because they were afraid of Mughal rule. They had been persecuted by Mughals in the past. The results of the rebellion were as follows. Parliament withdrew the right of British East India Company to rule India. The Viceroy, who is also called the Governor General, would now rule India. India was part of the British Empire now. Bahadur Shah was exiled to Burma under the charge of sedition. They stopped taking the land of the few remaining kings, princes, or rulers of India. Queen Victoria promised, at the end of the Sepoy Mutiny, that the British government would let Indians have equal rights. But there was a catch. They would better the Indian people by stamping out cultural practices. They divided and ruled, putting Hindus and Muslims against each other, and they even divided Bengal into Hindu and Muslim sections. After protests, this was revoked, but they still encouraged the formation of the Muslim League, further separating Hindus and Muslims. Now, let's go on to Section 3, Jhansi Ki Rani. Learn about the brave warrioress who wouldn't give up her Jhansi. Manikarnika Tambe, commonly known as the Queen of Jhansi. Her father worked for the Peshwa, ruler, Baji Rao II, so she had more freedom than most kids of the time. She studied shooting, archery, horseback riding, fencing, and other activities too. She was married to Raja Ganga Ram at the age of seven, and she became the Marani queen of Jhansi. When she was older, she had a son, but he died when he was only four months old. After his death, the Rani and Raja adopted a son, Anand Rao. Ganga Ram never fully recovered from his child's death and died in 1853. After the death of Ganga Ram, the British thought they would easily obtain the fort of Chasi, but they were wrong. They tried to bribe Lakshmi Bai with a pension of 60,000 pounds and told her to vacate the Jasi. Rani Lakshmi Bai refused this offer. Instead, she assembled an army of rebels, which included men and women, and was also supported by warriors. On the 18th of June, 1858, she was killed in battle. Section 4, the final section, is going to be about important freedom fighters who helped us gain independence. Bar Gangadhar Tirok was an Indian independence activist and teacher, one of the first people to advocate for Swaraj, the concept of a free India. Tirok was the first leader of the Indian independence movement. He is known for famously saying, in Marathi, his native language, Swaraj is my birthright and I shall have it. He was called Lokmanya Tirok because he was accepted by the people as a leader. Bar Gangadhar Tirok started his career as a school teacher but soon became a journalist and wrote his own newspaper, Kesari. Several times, Tirok got jailed because of what was written in his newspaper. Tirok was friendly with Lala Lajpat Rai and Bipin Chandra Pal, and so the trio were called Lal Bal Pal. All three were very influential, but Bar Gangadhar Tirak was the most famous independence advocate before Gandhi. Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, commonly known as Veer Brave Savarkar, was a freedom fighter in India and popularized the concept of Hindutva. Savarkar did this to establish a Hindu identity at the heart of India. Veer Savarkar was deported and arrested for writing a book about the sepoy immunity. Before he reached India, however, he swam across the English Channel and after attempting to get asylum in France and being rejected, got sentenced to life imprisonment in the cellular jail with hard labor and flogging. Even through this hardship, Savarkar managed to reform the prison at Port Blair. For instance, he set up a library and education and stopped compulsory religious conversion. 
He was transferred to another prison in May 1921 and released from there in 1924, but he was banned from any political activity for 13 more years. Bhagat Singh was one of the leaders of the Indian independence movement. When Bhagat Singh was 12 years old, he visited the site of the Amritsar massacre, only hours after it happened. Let's learn more about the Amritsar massacre before we continue. The Amritsar massacre, or the Jallianwala Bagh massacre, was a huge event that affected Indian history profoundly. It happened because, on March 10, 1919, the British Pact passed the Rowlett Act, an act saying that they could jail suspected revolutionaries without a trial for two years, and they could also arrest people without a warrant. The Rowlett Act also placed strict controls on the press. Because of this, violence between Indians and the police broke out, and Indians were even ordered to crawl on hands and knees on the street, and ordered to be whipped if they came near a British officer. On April 13th, they also banned large gatherings of more than four people. On the day that freedom of assembly was taken, 15,000 to 20,000 people gathered in Jallianwala Bagh to peacefully protest. The exits were first blocked by the British, then they opened fire. They also imposed a curfew, preventing families of the wounded to try to aid them or to retrieve bodies in the night. The British reported only 379 deaths, but in reality, the death toll was probably over a thousand. Back to Bhagat Singh. At first, he was up for peaceful protesting, but was disillusioned with this method after the Chori Chora incident. The Chori Chora incident was similar to the Boston massacre in the United States. Civilians taunted the police and the police opened fire. Bhagat Singh wished to devote his whole life to the independence movement, and so, to get out of an arranged marriage, he left this note. My life has been dedicated to the noblest cause, that of the freedom of the country. Therefore, there is no rest or worldly desire that can lure me now, and escape to Kanpur. The British became worried about his influence on the younger generation, and arrested him upon the pretext of being involved in a bombing. He was released five weeks after. In December 1928, Bhagat Singh and his comrade Shivaram Rajguru fatally shot Officer John Saunders, mistaking him for James Scott, the British police superintendent, who they had intended to shoot. They were trying to shoot James Scott because they believed he was responsible for the death of Lala Lajpat Rai, another freedom fighter. Chandrasekhar Azad, another associate of Bhagat Singh, also shot a constable as they fled from the police station. After their attempt failed, in a last attempt to defend Lala Lajpat Rai's honor, he put up posters justifying his actions. Bhagat Singh was convicted and hanged in March 1931. Mohandas K. Gandhi was an Indian lawyer and nationalist. He is famous all over the world for his non-violent resistance against British rule. After successfully completing law training but failing to start a law practice, he went to South Africa and ended up staying for 21 years. Here, he started using non-violent tactics for civil rights. He moved back to India in 1915 and in 1921, he adopted the dhoti and shawl style. Both were woven with yarn that was hand spun on a traditional chakra wheel. He did this to represent slash identify with the, with the poor and rural people in India. After this, he lived simply in a modest community eating vegetarian meals and fasting. Gandhi envisioned an India with Hindus, Muslims, and other religions living peacefully in India, but this was challenged by the Muslim nationalist movement in India. The Muslim nationalist movement was encouraged by the British. This was their divide and rule tactic. To combat this, Gandhi did many hunger strikes to peacefully protest. Gandhi is also famous for his Salt Satyagraha, Salt March, with 78 volunteers. At the beginning of the journey, he marched 388 kilometers, making speeches to the crowds along the way. 
The journey took 25 days to complete, and after reaching Dandi, the protesters made salt themselves, with the intention of breaking the salt laws as a means of peaceful protest. Afterwards, the protesters and Gandhi were heavily beaten, but this did not deter him. Thanks in part to Gandhi's peaceful protests, India was able to obtain independence. A side note, World War I, World War II, and Partition. In World War I, the British urged the Indian people to sign up for war, and even declared India at war alongside Britain, without consulting the Indian people. World War II played a huge role in Indian independence. Britain's economy suffered a great toll after the war expenses, and this, combined with all the freedom fighters' efforts, led to the freedom of India. But India's freedom didn't come without a price. The Muslim League finally got their wish, and a separate nation, Pakistan, was formed. On August 15, 1947, at the stroke of midnight, India got its independence, and Pakistan did too. The splitting of India and Pakistan was called partition, and much bloodshed occurred during partition. Gandhi tried to pacify the Pakistani side, and perhaps this is what led to his assassination. On the 26th of January 1950, the Indian constitution was formed, and India became a republic. Jawaharlal Nehru and Rajendra Prasad became prime minister and president, respectively. India had achieved independence, but there was a lot of work to be done. The economy of India had suffered greatly from the heavy taxes of the British. The Indian economy was almost a quarter of the entire world economy before British rule, but now it was less than 1%. From then, the rulers of India have been working tirelessly to build it back up and restore India to its former glory. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Share if you want more people to learn about Indian independence. Subscribe for more fascinating history, science, and book review videos. Thank you so much for watching.